All right, so I'm going to do a quick video on how to bypass the Windows 7 login uh, in case you've forgotten your password. So you say you try to enter it in, you're like, oh, I don't know what it is. Um, we're going to do this by uh, manipulating a program down here on the bottom left. As you can see, this little icon It's called Ease of Access. Um, what it's used for is it just it magnifies... Uh, words or read sentences out to you that's on the page it's uh it's for people with disabilities or you know have a hard time doing such things on a computer uh you do you don't need the windows 7 cd uh you don't need a password uh, reset disk made prior to forgetting the password um some people say the way i'm doing this is a password reset disk but i'm actually just using another operating uh system called linux to get into the Windows system, uh, manipulate some files so that when we do click this ease of access, what's going to pop up instead is going to be a command prompt. And then from there, we can reset the user's password and have access to the computer. So I'll start off, we'll open up a web browser, and we're going to download Ubuntu. Click Downloads. We're going to use Ubuntu Desktop. Now, there's a couple options here. You can use 64 or 32 bit, depending on what works best for your system. And then we'll go ahead and click download. Now, uh, they try to get you to donate, but uh, you can just click not now and then take me to download. We'll click download once again. Give it a second, and a window will pop up asking you where you'd like to save your download. To make it easy, I would suggest just saving it to your desktop. Click Save. And then as you can see, I'm running Firefox. It shows up here that it'll take roughly four minutes to download it, as it's uh, it's going pretty good. Yeah. It's about one gig in size. But I'm going to stop this download as I've already downloaded this before. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, what we have to do is, once you've downloaded Ubuntu, we're going to burn it to a DVD so that we can boot the computer off that DVD. Instead of starting Windows, we're going to start Linux operating system live off the, D off, the, off the DVD. So we'll go ahead and we'll power down the system. We'll wait for it to shut down. And then I'll simulate inserting a, a CD. I am running uh, this Windows operating system in a VMware Workstation. Now what this is, is it's just a program that allows me to run multiple computers within my one physical computer, so I don't have to have a bunch of them. As you can see here, all these tabs are different operating systems. Now, once you have uh, Ubuntu downloaded and you've burnt it to a DVD, we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert that into our computer uh, on our next boot. So I'm going to boot into the BIOS. Uh, you may or may not have to change the BIOS settings. Now what this is going to do is it's going to tell the computer that I'm going to check the CD drive first to boot off the CD drive instead of the, the hard disk or any other removable uh, devices as like USBs and stuff. So we're going to go down and then I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to move the CD drive up to the top. Now to access the BIOS on your computer, as soon as you hit the power button, uh, start tapping F2. Now it may be a, a different button on your computer. It may be F4, F8, uh, F12, or escape ke uh, key. So uh, you'll have to do a little Google search and make sure that you use the right one. So once you come into here, we're just making sure that we've moved the CD-ROM drive to the top of the boot list. Then we'll go over to Exit, and we'll say Exit Saving Changes. We'll hit Enter and say Yes. Okay, so now we're going to simulate inserting the CD. So I'm just going to go to Settings, My CD. I can use a physical drive in my computer, but I, I don't want to waste a, a CD. So I'm just going to browse and use the ISO fo uh, file that we just downloaded. So Ubuntu 14 Desktop is what we just did. I'll click Open. And it's going to use that and simulate it as a CD drive. I'm going to click OK, and then click Power on this virtual machine. So this would be the same thing as you inserting the CD and powering on your computer. 
As you can see, Ubuntu starts up instead of the Windows operating system. Now, the changes you made earlier to the BIOS, if there's no CD in there that has an operating system on it, you're just going to boot up into your regular Windows. So you don't have to worry about changing it back unless you want to. So we're going to wait. Ubuntu boots live off the CD, so there's no reason to install it on your computer. So let's wait for it to boot up. Alright, so it's loading up here. We're going to click Try Ubuntu instead of installing. So now Ubuntu is going to go ahead and fully load up the operating system as if it was installed on the computer. So once everything is loaded up, we're going to click on this file cabinet here on the left that says files when you highlight over top of it. Now in devices you're going to find your hard drive. As computer is, this is the Linux computer. So 64 gigabit or gigabyte volume here I know is my computer. That's the size of the, the one I set on my, my virtual machine. Once you find yours, you're going to want to click the Windows folder and then search in here for a folder called System32. We'll click that and then it will take a little while to load up the files that are in here because there's quite a few uh, main Windows files. So instead of searching through the, the hundreds of files that are in here, we're just going to type in CMD. We're going to right click on this file and we're going to click copy. And then we're going to right click again in an open space and click paste. Next, we're going to go and type in Utilmin. What we're going to do is we're going to right click this file and say rename. This file here is the file I was talking about at the beginning of the video that opens up the ease of access. So we're going to rename it Utilmin1 and then just hit enter. We're going to go back to the CMD file, our copy, and we're going to rename it to the Utilmin file. So when Windows thinks that it's opening up the Utilman file, it's actually going to be opening up the command prompt. So we'll click Rename, and we'll type in Utilman. We'll hit Enter, and then we'll close this window with Alt F4. And we can click the little gear up in the corner and say Shut Down. So before you fully shut down the system, I would open up your CD drive and take out the Ubuntu CD so that we do not boot back into Ubuntu as we want to enter Windows now. So I'll go ahead and I'll click shut down and we'll wait for the system to fully shut down. I will simulate removing the CD. I can go into my CDs and just say use the physical drive and click OK. So it says, please remove the, uh, the installation media and close the tray if necessary. So as you can see, our system is now powered down. We are going to go ahead and power up the, the Windows 7 machine again. This time it's going to boot normally into Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while it loads up. Okay, so the system is fully booted up. We still don't remember our password, and now we're going to go ahead and reset it. So we can type in net user, and you can see the, the users we have here. Administrator, guest, and then our user that we're after to change the password. So we're going to enter another command, net user, as we did before, and then our username, M-I-L-L-0526, and then the password that we want to create. So I can make it A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Oh, I don't have my number lock on. So A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to hit enter. And you're going to get the command is completed successfully. We can go ahead and we can close this window. And then click on our password. Log in here. A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. We'll hit enter. And you have now officially resetted the password for Windows 7 and you have full access. 
So you may be saying, yes, there's a security hole uh, left in the system if we leave it the way that it is. If you go back to that section of the video, we can delete the copy of Utilman that we created, rename Utilman 1 back to Utilman by taking out the 1, close everything, and then restart the system again, and that command prompt will now go back to the ease of access. So I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.